All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we get started, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechah Hakwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the saints, the Archim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbid, and a sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrew Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is a, a topic I wanted to get into. I was putting these particular scriptures together earlier once I, you know, had to head to the plantation. And I think, well, no, Salakia, I know. I have this epistle titled, This Walk Requires Immense Endurance. All right. <clears throat> and I wanted to start this one off in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1. And I'm going to start it at verse... Let me see which one I had. Verse 18. All right. And it reads, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. All right. And this is true because like the apostles and the elders and the sincere argument of Great Millstone get into often, you can learn, you know, you, when you get first get into it, you find when you first get into what the beloved Elder Apostle Gabar calls this thing of ours, you can find that, you know, it's fun. Like you find out the good aspects like, oh, I'm not just a Negro, Latino, Native American. You know, I'm actually I actually come from one of the 12 tribes of Israel, the biblical Hebrew Israelites. And then you find out, you know, we got law, statutes and commandments. You find out. Oh, well, we got put in slavery. We over here in the Americas because we sinned against the Heavenly Father. You find out that he's only dealing with us as a nation. He's not dealing with any of the heathen nations, which are the 17 other nations. You know, he only chose the nation of Israel. And then, um, then you know, the bitter part is, well, at least one bitter aspect I can name off top is, then you find out about, you know, how... How much how much you'll start to catch hell the more you grow in this truth, you know, and you have to have that balance. You have to have the wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures so, you know, you don't fall out. So you don't just, you know, take your hand off the plow. So, you know, you don't run out of stamina and fizzle out because, you know, like the elders get into often. That's how a lot of individuals fell out the truth. You know, some fell out over women, you know, some probably fell out just because, you know, they for whatever reason a number of reasons i don't know these individuals personally so i can only go off of the accounts you know that i've been given by the apostles and the elders and the akim on down whether it be through videos or you know in person but the point is it's important for all of us to make sure that we understand that there's a lot that comes with this and i'm and a lot of the akim have sh have shared the same sentiment that i'm about to share because i've shared it myself on a few occasions being a Hebrew Israelite, it's not, it's not a new fucking fad. All right, it's not, and it has nothing to do with being black. Yes, the true, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites were originally predominantly of swarthy skin tones, or you know, copper skin tones, you know, copper tone people, dark skin people, you know, originally. And we've always had instances over history where, you know, the men of our nation dealt with women from the other nations. So sometimes, you know, you would have instances where their sons and daughters came out looking a little bit like their mother, whichever nation she may have came from. But back then, all nations had some type of, they were either swarthy or, you know, swarthy or tawny. <clears throat> Salakia. Esau, the nation of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the red Hebrew Edomite, the devil that the Bible speaks of, that's the only nation that doesn't naturally produce pigment okay but the point is what i'm making is the point i'm trying to make right here is essentially these are a lot of different it's a lot of different um fun aspects that that's part of this truth but it has nothing to do with skin color this isn't a black movement so when you hear the term black in front of the term 
Hebrew Israelite, it's a misnomer and it's a byword. It's another way for the devil to try to categorize us, you know, and the beloved apostles, they get into that Greek word kategoreo, which, you know, it, it basically it basically explains itself like that's how the devil's going to do. He's going to try to categorize you. He's going to try to accuse you, which that's what the devil means is at the adversary, the accuser. All of these things. And we understand the witchcraft behind the word black. It means dark, devoid of light, evil, you know, bad times. And we understand we're not black. We are different shades of brown. But that's not what makes us Israelites. Because if that was the case, the Israelite foreigners will have no claim to the promises. And they do have just as much claim to the promises as we do. But, yeah, the point is, it's going to be a lot that comes with that. Because, like, you can know Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, he can bless you with this knowledge of knowing, hey, look, you know, a Hebrew Israelite foreigner is still an Israelite. But then, you know, you get on the back end, you got to deal with, you know, sometimes the agitation that comes with you being the only person out of a few out of a small select number that actually understands that. Because, you know, it is people that I remember when I first started to hear about the truth, that it was always some women that was upset about, you know, a man being able to have more than one wife, which is also another aspect of the truth that. It's, an, it's another aspect of the truth that's sweet for us, you know, but if it's not done properly, it can be it can be bitter. And let me go ahead and get that precept. Salakia, I'm trying to get the right term. I believe it's in the book of Revelation. All right. The water Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 8, and it reads, and, <coughs> Salakia, and it reads, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is in Salakia, which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. All right. Verse 11. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings okay so this precept right here helps to tie into the point that i'm trying to make when it comes about when it comes to lock it when it comes to the endurance that it takes and the endurance that's get you know the, the endurance that you need to you know be able to partake in this walk because <laughs> You'll, you'll be hit with like any number of fiery trials you know I've been watching I watched a, um, an older video from one of the elders of the DC camp I think the video is like 5 years old and the beloved elder he was basically breaking down like the importance of spiritual stamina and like you know getting charged up in the spirit he, he mentioned that there's some occasions where you know you'll get charged in the spirit just simply by prayer or so like, I don't want to I don't want to uh, misspeak about this, but I believe he was saying it's instances where you'll be charged in the spirit. And there's other instances where you get charged in the spirit by, you know, just having a conversation with one of the Akim. And that's that also gets into the importance of the ministry, you know, because sometimes in this walk, you can be so drained that you do need to, like, recharge. You know, it's, it's times when you got to, like, read the scriptures. You got to get the precepts that, you know that give you the reminder of that endurance, the reminder that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh he's not putting you through anything more than what you can handle. And you gotta also be aware of the instances in which Satan will try to attack you because it's, it's nothing for Satan to attack you in ways where like like the Akim, through the spirit of Pabi, Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh always, you know, mentioned in their videos and the beloved Elder Apostle Rakhah, he got into it recently as well. 
where it's like you have moments where you know satan to try to you know mess with your head and tell you oh you ain't a man of the lord you're not a prophet you're not of this you're not of that you know all of these things where he'll you know try to get you to you know that's satan's job to try to sift you as wheat which is you know that word that word that basically means to tempt someone to the verge to test their faith to the verge of overthrow you know the heavenly father he tests he tests our faith in a way that's going to refine us no matter who he uses to do it no matter what he uses to do it satan's job when he gets used by yahweh basham yahweh you know is the test to the verge of overthrow now the elect they're going to succeed anyway which is why the scripture says um let me go ahead and get that scripture i'm not going to put your scripture I believe it's for the benefit. It's been a while since I pulled out the scripture. That's not it. Salakia. So I believe it's in the book of Psalms. I will let the wicked of the wicked come to the right there and come for the shit. Salakia, I can't really get that. I, I can't, you know, flesh is messing with me right now. So I don't want to write that scripture comes back to me. But essentially, you know, there's aspects of this truth where we will have it where, um, like, the, the, the honey aspects, like we got right here in the book of Revelation. Like, you know, when you eat the book up, the book being the truth, the knowledge of this truth, the knowledge of the scriptures, you know. And... Finding out that you a man of the Lord, finding out, you know, the customs that you have to keep, finding out that, yeah, you aren't, you weren't tripping, <laughs> you wasn't losing your mind. Women are supposed to be in order and they're out of order. And that's a large reason as to why shit is fucked up. That's a large reason as to why brothers catch hell. No, you weren't hallucinating. Um, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of, he was that serpent that was in the garden that tempted Eve, not an actual serpent, not a, a, a physical snake. No, it was a serpent-like man. Because when you get that word Nakash in the Lashwan Kudash, it literally means sorcerer or enchanter. Okay? And it is tied to a serpent. And I believe it's also another word that um that means to hiss. And that hiss word, like a snake hisses, it also ties into the word that means to cast a spell on someone, which we already know that's wickedness, that's left hand. That's on the left hand side and that's what satan deals with that's what esau deals with so he gave eve that other philosophy and because he couldn't get to adam adam was the, the heavenly father yahweh was dealing with adam and adam was in order so satan it, it was no it was no way so how would this satan do satan being the physical counterpart not the spiritual demon say what did satan do the serpent he moved like a serpent move, which is why the scripture says he was more subtle than any beast of the field. He attacked the Achilles heel of the man, which is the woman. So he hit Eve with a new philosophy contrary to the breath of life, which were the law, statutes and commandments that we were given by Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, because in this era, they were oral. They weren't written on stone yet. So he hit her with that alternate way of doing things, and she introduced it to Adam. And because that's his woman, you know, he didn't think twice about it. He just he just went with it. But, you know, we curse to this day until Lord Yahweh comes back and he cracks those skies open. But the point is, these are all aspects that we hear that reminds us that, oh, yeah, man, it's it, it's it's a mm, salaki. The Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh it's a blessing to be in this truth. The Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh we got a ministry. The Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh we can learn more and more about our true fathers every single day, our, our true ancient righteous forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you know, the list goes on. 
but then you you know you get hit with the aspect where you know the little book makes your belly bitter you know with the hell that you catch with you know having to keep on still clocking in at the plantation and even if you know you work a decent enough job at whatever plantation you might be at you essentially you know Esau's always moving the goalpost you know Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah he's bringing this whole system down on Esau's head so you know even before then you know taxes would hit you but now you know inflation's messing with individuals you know you got out of order women a number of things man it's just like it's days where you look at it you like man <laughs> if it wasn't for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah I'd have been checked out by now and I don't mean like deletion checked out. I mean like mentally checked out. Like what's the point of doing anything? Like, you know, be like the walking dead. But that's why we pray to Yahweh Basham Yahushah to take not his Rechakwadash from us and to give us the strength to endure, you know, and all of these number of things. All right. So let me go ahead and see the other scripture that I had. It was the book of Romans. And I was going to flow in the spirit and just get, you know, I was going to, get the eighth chapter flow in the spirit i don't know exactly which verse i'll stop at and i'm gonna get verse one from the top and it reads there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in hamashiach yahushah who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in hamashiach yahushah hath made me free from the law of sin and death now what does that mean this right here is a cut to individuals that try to push this narrative that, oh, uh, the Messiah, he died on the cross. So I can do what I want to. Nah, you just fucking wicked. It has nothing to do with what the Lord uh, did. The Lord didn't die on the cross so you can be a fuckhead. The Lord, he died on the cross for, first and foremost, the elect of the nation of Israel. And second, he died for the entire nation of Israel because only the one third of Israel is going to be saved on this side. The two thirds are going to be wiped out along with Esau, Edom and a lot of the heathen. Once the ICBM nuclear missile destruction comes, which is the second death. That's the lake of fire. Of, that's the lake of fire and brimstone, not a place, a spiritual hell where you go under the earth and burn for all eternity. That's bugged out Christian doctrine. All right. So essentially this scripture is letting you know that the grace period that we're under which is also one of the it's the third reason I'm bringing out why Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, our beloved Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, went on the cross to become the mediator of the new covenant. And as the mediator of the new covenant, he, he's our mediator and our high priest, and he also afforded us this grace period. Because under the first covenant, there was no <laughs> there was no grace period. You know, certain sins you trespass, you have to offer a burnt offering, a sin offering, you know, a trespass offering and things of that like you know you'd have to get the proper sacrificial animal and you'd have to you know sacrifice it according to the law other sins that were worthy of death you would just get put to death all right like on the spot you get you you be deleted by stone bath or you be deleted by you know getting barbecued so under the grace period that hamashiach yahweh afforded us we have it where we essentially we rehearse the righteous acts we're not held to the first covenant standard of um like i just said if you commit a sin worthy of death you just get put to death on the spot we're not under that but it doesn't mean you continue and sin that grace may abound no you properly use the grace period by rehearsing the righteous acts which is a, a great show of faith you keep the laws to the best of your abilities. You keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. Emphasis on to the best of your ability in this captivity. And you also have to realize that no one can perfectly keep the law in this captivity. The only one who ever kept the law perfectly while in the flesh at all was Hamash Yahweh And he's the only one that was designed to do so. So if any individual is telling you that they can keep the law perfectly, they're fucking lying. They're just doing that for cult of personality. They're just doing that to make themselves seem holier than thou. And just, you know, it's always about ego with, two, with you know, with two thirds of Jake. So essentially, this is letting you know that under the grace period, properly using the grace period, rehearsing the righteous act of the laws, Salakia, the righteous, the righteous acts of the laws, the righteous acts of the law, statutes, and commandments, you'll have it where the Lord, he, he will 
he'll put this he'll put it in your spirit through the rakak wadash to do what's necessary unto salvation you'll you'll dodge a lot of snares like you know there's situations where if you would have still been in the world you would have found yourself committing adultery because there was nothing there's we like we know our people we know jake there's nothing governing jake Nothing's if nothing's governing Jake, Jake will commit adultery. It, it's nothing. Like if Jake sees a woman on the street, you know, big booty chick, whatever, he ain't got no problem going smack her. Like he and even if he sees her and he don't give a damn, he you know, Jake is just fucking wicked. And then when Jake get you know, then when Jake get filled with full of lead and everybody wanna have a candlelight vigil. But you know, it's aspects like that that if it wasn't for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai giving us the law, statutes, and commandments, it'd be free willy. A lot of dudes being put to death, a lot of women being put to death because of that adultery alone. So, what do we do under this grace period where, you know, you don't get put to death immediately like it used to be? Well, like an entire community would put hands on you and just, you know, delete you. Where now it's isolated events where if you do get deleted for committing adultery, which you had no business doing, the person who deleted you gets jail time. And that doesn't really incite too much fear in these adulterers or these adulteresses because you know they feel like a person might be too afraid to put them to death so they go ahead and commit it but the point is Yahweh Ba Shemiel Shah he's going to execute judgment whichever way he wants to execute judgment we don't we no longer have to waste our time not Salaki not waste our time we no longer have to because the Lord knows we're in captivity we can't we, we're not sovereign in this era we can't keep the laws statutes and commandments 100 percent we can't execute the judgments of the laws when one of us goes off so he's letting us know that you know through grace we keep the laws to the best of our ability so lock you for the tangent i'm kind of you know rolling in the spirit verse three for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh the most high sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit now that is the precept that's the proper way to apply what our lord what our beloved lord and savior yahweh shah mashiach nailed to the cross he nailed the curse of the law to the cross he did not nail the law to the cross he even told you, for all you Christians, that the first thing you want to do to call you to, to try to prove you're a Christian, you grab the Bible and you just open up right in Matthew, missing thousands of years worth of beautiful history and, and wisdom and understanding. It's right there in Matthew where the Lord tells you, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle from the law shall pass until all be fulfilled so where do these christians where do these wicked jake get off thinking that the the lord nailed the law or trying to push even worse trying to push and teach that the lord nailed the law to the cross like just stop being just stop being so disgustingly wicked man if you want to be wicked go ahead and do it but don't lie don't bear false witness against the lord all right so essentially our Lord, he went on the cross. He he had to come down in sinful flesh. He had to be born through the seed of man, going into a woman, which is under the law of Moses. And he had to he had to walk in flesh just like us. He had to be born the same way as we are. And show us he had to be a literal walking example. Of how to operate while in the flesh. The Lord, the Lord, He's our. What's the way I want? What's the word I want to use? He's our sure route into the kingdom of heaven. Our beloved Lord and Savior, our King, Mediator, and High Priest, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, He is our straightforward, sure way into the kingdom following his example not abusing the law that we were given by the heavenly father Yahweh, and that he sent his only begotten son Yahweh shy 
to die on a cross for us because we couldn't get it right. We don't sit right here and make it where, oh, uh, we can just know you niggas is wicked, man. Any any individual teaching that or trying to push that is just fucking wicked. That has nothing to do with the purpose of our Lord going on the cross. All right. Let me see what else is next. I think I had. Yeah. Salakia. Picking up at verse five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Con, because once you walk in the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, you do your best to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And like the beloved brother uh, Amok, your eyes from Yahweh that he got early in his uh, live stream, he pulled out the uh, precept of the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Verse 1, and it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh, Baha'sham Yahweh Shah, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. All right. Verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Con. Now we understand that in this captivity, not every Jake is going to be like LeBron James rich, especially if you, you know, preaching this truth. If you're preaching the true 144 percent unadulterated doctrine of the heavenly father, Yahweh, which comes from the Holy Bible. You're not going to have it where you you have, a you know, celebrity level riches. And even if you do, you know, in whatever situation you have it in, Esau still runs the world. So he'll find ways to attack you like the serpent does. He's going to find ways to make your life hell because you can't escape these curses until your house. Shah Hamashiach comes back. Because if you had because you already see Jake trying to do it with all this unity camp bullshit, all this. Uh, you don't got to call on the names of the heavenly father's only begotten son. You only, and some of these wicked ass niggas even teach that it's you only it's not even important that, you know, Lord, Yahweh Shah's name. Yeah, it's Jake doing stuff like that, and even if they aren't maliciously saying it, like it, in, in such a histrionic way, Salakia. Even if they aren't saying it in a histrionic way, like Native IUIC or you know some of these other like out there bug outs, these individuals push that. That's the that's the um, what's the word I want to use? That's the example they set forth. And the beloved Elder Malcolm of the uh, the GMS Chicago camp, he got this, he brought out the understanding earlier when he was doing a video about this, uh, about this, uh, this woman that uh, I guess she, she's probably potentially been watching, you know, the Occam of Great Millstone, the Apostles and the Elders videos. But, you know, the Elder Malcolm made the point of like, OK, even if you are telling, you know, some truth and in her case, even if she, though she was telling some truth, she was out of order because She's teaching in the way that Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah commanded the men to teach. Like if you're a woman, you're only supposed to teach the women and children. And you do that within, you know, the confides of, you know, you being around them personally. But when you go on the Internet where everybody can see, that's going off. Now, when it comes to the men, likewise, since it's, since we have the duty to go out to the highways and the hedges to preach this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth so that the end may come and Lord Yahweh Shah can come and crack these skies open and um, and translate the elect into those chariots. I don't want Ratazah, we be those men. Since that is our lot, since that's the the, the commission that we've been given by Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shah, when we go on the internet, we have to make sure that we properly, rightly divide the words of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shah. And if we deviate, we got to get corrected for that because that's like the beloved Elder Apostle Kabar said, it's a steep penalty for speaking incorrectly about Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shah. If you don't do what he tells you to do, that's not a game. He can easily put you to death. And I believe the beloved Elder Apostle Kabar got the account in the book of Job where Job's friend Eliphaz, the Heavenly Father Yahweh told him that he didn't like the way Eliphaz, he didn't like what Eliphaz said about him to Job. So he told Eliphaz to go and, you know, he better have Job do a sacrifice for him unless Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shah put Eliphaz to death. 
So it's that serious. And Jake thinks it because, you know, let me see if I can get that scripture. I don't want to butcher it. I think it's also in the book of Ecclesiastes. I believe it was execute. The water y'all about Shem It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 11, and it reads Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And this is shown when these jakes just try to go up their own way. You know, if Lord Yahweh Shah says, go out to the highways and the hedges and bid them to the marriage. These jakes will know what the Lord said, and it's simple to do. And these jakes will sit right here and never once show their face. No one knows who they are. They preach in all types of wayward doctrine. They basically preach in a Christian Israelite doctrine, which is that's off you cannot mix those two things and they just do all they don't have any real understanding of the scriptures they even really be teaching in the first place but they do it so what we have here is that also serves as a vexation of spirit to those that actually want to do the will of you how about sham shah but we know that for the sake of prophecy you know you got to have these false teachers rise up in these last days all right so let me get back to the book of romans chapter 8 and I'm going to get verse 6. And it reads, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to, to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can be. All right, stop right there. What does that mean? Does that mean that, oh, if you carnally minded, then you're so powerful with the wickedness that the Heavenly Father, he can't reel you in? No. You ain't, like, you ain't shit. None of us are anything before the Heavenly Father. He says all the all the nations are nothing and they're less than nothing. He picked Israel, the nation of Israel, the, the biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and speckled bird to be his holy and peculiar nation. And even then, he has a scripture where he says, fear not thou worm, Jacob. A worm is helpless and a worm is also insignificant. So at the same time, you know, while we're very dear to you, how about Shem Yahweh that scripture was more so going into, you know, us being in this powerless, helpless state under Esau, Edom, you know, in, in this captivity in Babylon the Great. We're not sovereign. We're, we're This is the most oppressed that we've ever been and that we ever will be. Adawan Ratazah, we'd be those men that get <laughs> translated out of here on the first go round. And that being the case, that's about our power. Now, as far as the second aspect of, you know, Jacob being a worm is letting you know that, yeah, you are insignificant in, in the eyes of you. How about Shemiah was shot? Because he can raise up stones unto Abraham. As the scripture said, he doesn't need us to do his work. He's choosing us to do it. So we got to move with a certain level of humility. But if you a uh, wicked individual, you only wicked because the Heavenly Father made you to be wicked. You're not so powerful that you're resisting this will. No one can resist this will. Everything is in its lot. Everything and everybody's in their lot. So essentially, this scripture is letting you know that if you carnally mind it, that's you veering more towards the side of listening to Satan, whether you're aware of it or not. And if you are a righteous individual, if you're seeking your Hawabah Shem Yahweh Shah in meekness and sincerity and with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, then through your Yahweh Shah, he's going to reel you back in. You'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, you'll repent. You'll do what you can to be more circumspect, be more sober and vigilant. So, you know, you'll be more on guard the next time Satan tries that. Whatever he tries to try to get you, you know, where he, where he sifts you as wheat. All right. Verse eight. So then they that are of the flesh. So like if, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please the most high. Calm, because those that, people that's in the flesh, they'll do things like they'll commit adultery left and right. They don't care. There's nothing stopping them. They'll steal. They'll they'll delete people unjustly you know which is premeditated um you know they'll they'll do all types of wickedness man and this is why this is babylon the great because all the wickedness that the bible condemns babylon promotes it and it also prevents judgment from being executed 
at all in most cases. And if the judgment does get executed, the individual who executed the judgment, they try to put that individual to death or they try to put that individual in prison where they lose their entire life. All right. Verse nine. But ye are not in the Salaki, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of the most high dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Hamashiach, he is none of his. So these individuals out here talking about, you know, you can call it Heavenly Father, whatever you want to. Or, you know, the names ain't important. Or, you know, just these two-thirds jakes that just don't want to hear the message that always walk past the camp, scoff, talking shit. They not of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. No matter how many times they say Jesus and Christ because it's written in the Bible, it doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of words that, you know, Salaki, I won't say a lot. There's a good number of words in the Bible that's been implanted by the serpent. That's why the scriptures tell you, study to shoot thyself approved. You can't just take these things at face value. You can't sit right here and call on a name that for all you know, and for all you don't know, it could literally be offensive to the Heavenly Father. It could have nothing to do with his son that he sent to die for our sins. And you got Jake thinking that, oh, well, y'all can't teach me nothing. Y'all just those guys out there that wear those garments. Like, all right, cool. Keep that same energy in Jacob's trouble, nigga. Verse 10. And if Hamashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. And that's beautiful because Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, like it's already been said countless times, our Lord went on the cross for our sins. His body was bruised more than any any man, you know. But our Lord, he's going to come back in that new body, just like the same body he's going to give us when he translates us. Ottawa and Ratazah, we be those men. A body that's spiritual, a spiritual body that's perfect, immortal. Uh, it's not bound by the, the, the what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The frailties of the flesh, you know. It's basically, you know, you don't, we're not as forgetful as we are in this flesh. Once we get into those new bodies, we'll have, most importantly, we have the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah written on our inward parts so we won't go off. We'll be perfect just like Hamashiach Yahweh Shah is because we'll be walking in the spirit without any, any acts, without Satan having any access to our souls. We won't be able to be tempted anymore. None of that because we already will have fulfilled our lot. Mm, so, like, yeah. so when we walk in the spirit, you know, we keep the laws to the best of our ability and we properly use that grace period, you know, because really at this point, without Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, it really, it really is nothing to do here, man. Like everything's really vanity, you know, and I got another epistle I'm going to uh, do through the spirit and power Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah that I'll uh, try to post before the night's out. Getting into the vanity of things. That's why, you know, I had some more precepts lined up. All right. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that is raised up. So like it, but if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shah from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not to the flesh. So like it, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh. To live after the flesh. For if ye for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Yeah, because we're gonna have a lot of temptations in this walk that'll drain your stamina. Where you may you know you may feel like Satan's about to overthrow you. You may not even and sometimes it may be so intense you might not even be aware that you're about to be overthrown. But Yahweh Shah, he'll, he's about, he's going to save you, you know, so long as you keep that faith and that sincerity. Like, you got to cry out to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah when you feel overwhelmed. You can't, you know, you can't look at it like, oh, I got it. No, I don't do that. You got to make sure that you, uh, you always stay circumspect, you know, like the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says, be sober and vigilant, you know. Satan don't do anything, man. Like, Satan's not going to fight for it. He's the serpent. He's going to be is subtle as he's been since the garden he's going to do all types of all types of wickedness he's going to hit below the belt he's going to attack your achilles he give you a rabbit punch he'll do all that so you got to be you but we still got to strive lawfully you know put on the full arm of your how about shah because if state if satan can't beat you you know 
if he can't stand and bang with you on some UFC type stuff, you know, if, if Satan, if Satan know that you got your good stand and bang game, you know, he going to try hit you with the ground game. He going to try to do takedowns, get you on the ground and then, you know, go to work, go to town on you from there. If he know that you got good, you know, ground and pound, he going to try to hit you with a submission. If you know you good with submissions, he going to try to get up out of that. You know, it's it's a constant battle. That's that's the battle of the spirit and the flesh because when you walk in the spirit, you walking with Yahweh Shai. The way, the truth, and the life. But when you walk in the flesh, that's Satan's playground. And and he don't play fit. He tossing you in the mud, he throwing sandy eyes, he doing all that. If you know that you got if you know that you, you know, you can outlast him, he's gonna do what he can to get your head out the game. If he knows that you uh if he knows your stamina is that great, he's going to do whatever he can to drain it. He's going to make you occupy your stamina in other areas. All right. So you got to, you know, you got to make sure that you're walking with your Howard Shah. He's the way that's going. He's the way that you defeat Satan. You understand, you know, you got to beat Satan at every little battle because it's not going to be over until we get into that new covenant. All right. Verse 13. For if you live after the flesh. Oh, no, it's a lock. I just read that one. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of the most high, they are the sons of the most high. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. And of children, then heirs, heirs of the most high. And joint heirs with Hamashiach. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified also together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be re revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope and the creature is us the children of israel the so-called negroes latinos native americans this is letting you know that the lord he always had the elect the elect was created before the foundation of the world you know he just put them in the flesh to play out their lot for the sake of prophecy so he's letting you know like that's why the scripture says no one can lay anything to the charge of the lord's elect meaning that yeah we're going to go off in the flesh but like the scripture says let me just go ahead and get that Book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16 For a just man falleth seven times a complete number and riseth up again but the wicked shall fall into mischief and the Lord already made it where the elect already has the victory I don't want right to Zah, we be those men we just got to play it out we just got to you know endure to the end that we might be saved like Lord Yahweh Shah said and be, us being subjected to vanity like we always say people always used to be like damn well if you know if the lord did such and such then why didn't he just make us because the lord wanted us through the spirit and probably how about shmiel shah putting the rakhak wadash on our apostles elders and the arcum of great millstone and those that teach the likewise doctrine it's been revealed to us that yahweh about shmiel shah he put he made us go off so we can understand truly understand righteousness and wickedness because he's going to give us the entire creation dominion over the entire creation we'll only be under him in our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. That's perfect. But he's balanced and he's fair. We wouldn't really be able to be called righteous judges if we've never experienced both sides of the spectrum, righteousness and wickedness firsthand, and had a thorough understanding of why righteousness has to be in rulership. Because under this wicked queendom run by Esau Edom, the fucking perverted profane red hebrew edomite the devil that the bible speaks of everything's out of course no matter how much you work you feel like you and in a lot of cases not you feeling as you know that your money's being bled out you basically like the book of habakkuk says let me see if i can get that i believe it's the book of habakkuk chapter two that's the prophet those that work Was it there's two Salakia? Yeah, it might have been uh the first chapter of Habakkuk. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh man, Salaki. Salaki, it was the book of Haggai. Okay, so the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6, and it reads, Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough to drink. So like, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. So this is definitely true in Babylon the Great, because Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, he's crashing this economy, man. He's doing everything he can. Inflation is ridiculous. You know, he keeps having everybody flood the country. He, he's just off. So all of these are, you know, the results of us going against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So we can see like, okay, if we wouldn't have broke if we wouldn't have broke the law, statutes, and commandments, we'd have been in better case. And now we also, not because we don't want to be in this, not just because the situation is downright disgusting and vexing, but we also genuinely are growing in the wisdom and the understanding of why righteousness is needed because everyone's suffering even the heathen are suffering don't get me wrong the children of israel are the primary target of you know the wickedness that's being you know promoted and pushed throughout the earth and you know how much it harms us and you know how much how much life get how much how many jakes have lost their lives but the heathen are suffering too all right But yeah, that's all I wanted to get right here for this particular epistle. Hopefully this is edifying to the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. So once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah HaKwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere archim of great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bear, and a sincere salutation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and Ababa Ball. We almost out of here, Adwan Ratazah. Be sober, be vigilant. Shalom.